Hi everyone, today we're going to study sets and this is part one. Let's begin with the definition of set. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Capital letters like A, B, and so on are usually given to name a set and the objects of a set, namely elements or members, are contained inside two curly brackets separated by commas. Small letters like A, B, and so on are usually used to represent the elements of a set. If the element A is contained in the set A, then we say that the element A belongs to the set A, and we denote it by this symbol. And we read this as A is an element of set A. If the element A is not in set A, we say that A does not belong to the set A and is denoted by this symbol. And we read this as A is not an element of set A. There are ways of describing a set. The first is by listing method. By listing all the distinct elements of the set in curly brackets separated by commas, the order of elements does not matter. In here, we have two examples of a set by listing method. Set A has elements 1, 3, 5, and 7. Set B has the elements A, B, and C. The second way is what we call set builder notation. By using a set builder notation, the elements are represented by using a symbol X or any other variable followed by the properties of X as an element of the set and closed in curly brackets. Examples, set E has elements X such that X is a positive even integer, X is greater than 2, and X is less than 10. If we are going to write the set E by listing method, we will have the set E equals 4, 6, and 8. Another example is set A, whose elements are variable A, such that A is a natural number. Let us write the set A by listing method, and we will have A equals the elements are 1, 2, 3, and so on. There are some standard notations for sets. Number 1 is the set N. This is the set of natural numbers. The elements are 1, 2, 3, and so on. Second is the set of whole numbers, denoted by capital W. The elements starts from 0, followed by 1, then 2, and so on. Number 3 are the integers denoted by Z. This is composed of the natural numbers, the 0, and the opposites of the natural numbers. Set 4 is the Q, and this is the set of rational numbers. Another set is the R, and this is the set of real numbers. Set C is the set of complex numbers. Set S with exponent plus 
is the set of positive elements in that set S. Next is the S with an exponent minus. This is the set of negative elements in that set S. The last here is S with exponent asterisk. This is the set of non-zero elements in the set S. Let us define more terms. The set with no elements is called empty set or null set. And this is denoted by an empty set with this symbol or a zero with a slash. A set with only one element is called singleton set. Example, this set here is a singleton set with only the numeral 5 as its element. A set A is said to be a subset of the set B if and only if every element of the set A is an element of the set B. It is denoted by the symbol A is a subset of B. Now take note that the symbol here that we use in the subset, it means the set A is a subset of or equal to the set B. Now, if the set A is not equal to the set B, then we say that A is a proper subset of the set B. That means B has at least one element more than A. And this is now denoted by this symbol. And this is read as A is a proper subset of B. Example, the set A whose elements are 2, 4, 10, and 16 is a proper subset of the set E whose elements are the variable x such that x is an even integer. So we say that A is a proper subset of E. Let's go to this theorem. For every set S, number 1, empty set is a subset of it. In symbol, this is for the empty set or the null set is a proper subset of S. Second, S is a subset of itself. In symbol, we write like this. Since S is equal to itself, we use this symbol. So we say that S is a subset of S. Today, we're going to study the part 2 of sets. Let us define more terms. Two sets, A and B, are equal, and we write A equals B, if and only if they have exactly the same elements. That is, if A and B are sets, then A and B are equal if and only if for all x, x is an element of set A if and only if x is an element of set B. In this case, we have A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Example, the sets A whose elements are 2, 3, 5 and the set B whose elements are 3, 5, and 2 are equal because they have the same elements. The order of the elements does not matter. 
Also, it does not matter if the elements are listed more than once in a set. Example, the set 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5 and the set 2, 3, 5 are equal. Let us now study cardinality of a set. Let S be a set. If there are exactly n distinct elements in S, we say that S is a finite set and n is the cardinality of S. It is denoted by this symbol. The S is enclosed in two bars. Example, set A has elements 2, 3, 6, and 11. Then, the cardinality of A equals 4. And we can see that there are 4 elements in A. If the number of elements is not finite, then set S is called an infinite set. Examples The cardinality of a null set equals 0 because null set has 0 elements. Second, let A be the set of all the letters in the English alphabet. Then, the cardinality of set A equals 26. Number three, let Z be the set of all integers. Then Z is an infinite set. Let us now define power set. Let S be a set. The power set of S, denoted by P of S, is the set of all subsets of S. Example, what is the power set of S whose elements are 2, 3, and 5? So the P of S equals the first element is the null set. Second, the set 2. Next, the set 3. Next, the set 5. Next, the set 2 and 3. Next, the set 2 and 5. Next, the set 3 and 5. And the last is the set itself, 2, 3, and 5. These are the subsets of this set S. This is the power set. If a set A has n elements, then it has 2 raised to n subsets. That is, if the cardinality of A is equal to n, then the cardinality of P of A equals 2 raised to n. For the above example, we see that the cardinality of S is 3. In other words, the number of elements of S is 3. Then, the cardinality of P of S equals 2 raised to 3. And this is equal to 8. It means there are 8 subsets in the power set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Let's discuss the Venn diagram. Sets can be represented graphically using Venn diagrams. In Venn diagram, the universal set, which contains all the objects under consideration, is represented by a rectangle. Inside the rectangle, circles or other geometrical figures are used to represent sets. Sometimes, points are used to represent the particular elements of the set. 
The following Venn diagram represents a universal set with A and B as subsets, and A is a subset of B. I hope you learned something from this video. See you again next time. Thank you.